why you don't try make a 3D calculator game? Or you can't do that? So Danny's mom challenged me to make a 3D game, but since I'm coding for a calculator, I can't use any game engine like Unity or Godot. I want this game to be a planet colony simulator. Picture this, you are sent to Mars with very few resources and a few other people, and you have to make this planet habitable. I don't think anyone has ever thought about colonizing Mars before. Anyway, my goals are to have terrain, custom buildings, and the ability to save the game. The game will use a similar style as Civ 6, SimCity 4, and Clash of Clans. All of these games use the iconic isometric 3D projection. This view is perfect for building games. So I created a new C project and got a blank screen to appear. Before I did anything too complicated, I wanted to see if I could display a 2D square. Okay, that works. The isometric version of this should just be a square squished on its side. Okay, now we have one individual square. But that wouldn't work in the long term, so I needed a grid of tiles. And that's not how it's supposed to go. I spent all day working at it, and eventually got it to work with the power of the internet. What would we do without it? Now that the grid was working, it was time for 3D. As you can probably guess, 3D on a 2D screen is just about perception. So I wanted to start simple with a box. To give the illusion that this is a full block, we only have to fill in the front faces. Now don't get me wrong, boxes are cool and all, but we have to have actual buildings. I followed this tutorial by Flow Graphics and made my first isometric house. After I made this house in Photoshop, I had to convert it to a format that could be read by the program. Converting images to sprites has always been my weak suit, but I spent all day all day trying to figure out why my image was not transparent. Apparently I was using the wrong color code for white. Who would have thought about that? Seriously, your color code is off by one and you end up spending three hours messing with the relevant settings. I hate this, I've actually had enough, I hate programming, I'm starting a Minecraft channel, I am done. Oh, there we go, I got the house in the game. This isn't bad at all, but we're not making SimCity for a calculator. I'm saving that for a future video. I got to work on designing more sprites for the game. I drew an iron mine, a solar panel, an ice to water generator, a spaceport, and a few other graphics. If there are any artists watching this video, please help me. I don't know what I'm doing. With sprites checked off the list, it was time to work on the terrain. With only 81 tiles, the terrain won't look very detailed. So I scrapped the big tiles entirely and worked on getting the terrain to work with 400 tiles. I tried randomly generated terrain, that looked cool, but it didn't look natural. The terrain needed to be based off of the tiles around it. I set the first tile to a random height, and each tile next to it would either be higher, lower, or the same level. This method was flawed though, since the tiles in the next row would not take into account the height of the tiles in the row before it. Some of the more experienced coders out there might be asking, why don't you use Perlin noise? I looked into it but it was too complicated, so I decided to make my own system. Sue me. I did some big brain coding and got each tile height to be based off the four tiles around it. And voila, it looks really nice, but the terrain generation was like your mom, extremely slow. The front face of each tile does not need to be drawn if it's going to get covered by the tile in front of it. With this and some other similar optimizations, the game was running a little bit faster. Still, I couldn't move the map around like I used to. And there it is, a 3D calculator sandbox game. Let's try it out. I'm going to start by placing down a few iron mines to get the money rolling in, then I'm going to buy a few ice to water generators. And my planet is flooding, let's heat the place up with some power plants. Now I think we can afford to place down some houses, and I think we should let this run for a while. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Coding for the calculator isn't the most lucrative endeavor, but the constraints are what make it fun. I absolutely love this game. This is one of my first original ideas, and it has a really good foundation. 
I'm thinking that this could be a computer game or mobile app one day, and maybe that should be my goal for this year. I think I'm going to call this game Genesis X, but if you have any other name ideas, leave those in the comment section. It's Everyday Code for Everyday People. Thanks for watching.